Welcome to this uh, CTSnet series of interviews with the giant of thoracic surgery. I'm Marco Nardini, and I have the great pleasure to be here in Lisbon at the 2019 EX meeting with Professor Franca Melfi. Professor Melfi is head of Robotic Multispecialty Center for Surgery and also head of Minimal Invasive and Robotic Thoracic Surgery at University Hospital of Pisa, where she is professor since 2013. Professor Melfi guided innovation and research in general thoracic surgery in all fields. And I'm thinking about uh, robotic uh, thoracic surgery, radio guided surgery, and so on. In 2005, she founded the Women's Association Against Lung Cancer. She's also the editor of the European Journal of Cardiothoracic Surgery, and she's author of many publications and book chapters. Professor Melfi, thank you to be here today and uh, to accept our invitation. Thank you for this kind invitation. I am really honored to participate to this interview. Of course, the first question is uh, about uh, robotic thoracic surgery. How everything started in, in Pisa, and uh, from here, how uh, your center in Pisa became the most important in the world? So I started to work uh, on this project uh, by chance. In 2001, uh, it was bought uh, uh, the platform in the cardiothoracic department, uh, which was my first department. And uh, the program started uh, uh, for cardiac surgeons. So I started uh, uh, with them, but uh, obviously the focus at that time was uh, for cardiac surgery, not for thoracic surgery. So. Um, I performed uh, several cases, but they were very few cases. In any, in, in any cases, uh, um, in 2004, I was involved uh, by the EACTS uh, program to perform a live surgery during uh, the joint meeting, which was, in, uh, was uh, organized at that time in uh, Leipzig. So this gave uh, a new impetus. This gave the possibility to, to start with a very uh, well-structured uh, program. And uh, so in uh, agreement uh, with uh, the uh, CEO of my hospital and also with uh, the uh, committee, the regional committee uh, of Tuscany, which is the region where I live, it was designed a specific program, and uh, the program implied a multidisciplinary uh, use of this platform, a centralization of the organization, and obviously uh, the possibility to involve all uh, specialties and all surgeons. So um, today we are in a fantastic uh, situation because uh, we have a dedicated center with uh, three platforms dedicated uh, for uh, all for uh, robotic surgery. Uh, we have uh, 34 uh, surgeons who work uh, in this center and uh, we perform more than 1,300 procedures uh, uh, per year, of which 250 of uh, thoracic surgery. So this uh, gave the possibility uh, to me, the opportunity to become an official and recognized proctor in Europe and uh, gave me the possibility to share my experience with the other colleagues. So today, uh, in, uh, in Europe, there are uh, almost 22, 23 uh, different uh, centers. Yeah, so the key was uh, sharing and multi-specialty, and you started in Pisa, but you helped so many colleagues to start their own program in, in Europe. Absolutely, yes. Uh, this was the key, you are right. Uh, the key is uh, to apply this uh, technology in, uh, in a multi-specialty way. And uh, the reason uh, uh, is understandable if we consider that uh, this technology is uh, still expensive. So the possibility uh, to maintain a sustainability of this technology is uh, to apply uh, the platform in uh, many uh, specialties. And uh, also, the reason is also uh, uh, 
we have to consider that this system, uh, which is uh, uh, really um, helpful uh, for complex procedure, uh, is possible to apply to perform a very complex procedure, and it is for this reason that we need a special center to apply for training program. This is the, the real, the real key, and the real reason why we try to have a specific dedicated center with a dedicated team, dedicated platform, and obviously ORs. We celebrated 18 years since that first lung robotic lobectomy that you mentioned, and it was 2001, and you published the first series in 2002. How the technique and the technology evolved since then? Oh, um, the technology uh, improved a lot over the years. Uh, if I remember when I started my first lobectomy, it was, uh, as I, uh, I told you uh, before our uh, interview, uh, it was a very rudimental uh, system at the beginning. So uh, the procedure was almost similar to the VATS procedure. Now it's completely changed. It is uh, uh, for this reason that um, uh, we can perform a very complex procedure. In my center, uh, we perform a, a complex procedure in uh, thoracic surgery, obviously, uh, like sleeve lobectomy or uh, uh, lobectomy for locally advanced uh, cancer after chemo radiotherapy, but we perform also um, kidney transplantation or uh, uh, pancreas transplantation. So uh, this technology changed a lot because now we can use a platform which is uh, more precise if, if we compare this platform with the first is uh, really, the arms are really flexible. We have uh, uh, many instruments, uh, very sophisticated instruments that allow uh, to perform a complex procedure. So there's no real limit for the indication, but actually the robot allows to do complicated procedures, which are sometimes easier with the robot than by VATS or sure. maybe by OPEN. And uh, Professor Murphy, you are going to become the president of the Italian Society of Thoracic Endoscopy at the next upcoming, actually, next week meeting, which will be held in Pisa. So what are your ideas, your projects for the society, and how do you see the thoracic community more in general? Oh, um, this is a really privilege. It's a really privilege because uh, I'm uh, the first woman president of this society and uh, and again uh, is uh, my privilege because this society was founded by my masters and uh, the idea when it was founded when when uh, was uh, created was uh, to um, to involve all the people uh, who use it at that time uh, uh, the technologies the new the innovations at that time the innovations was uh, just the endoscopic innovations, imaging. Uh, at that time, uh, the bronchoscopy was an innovation. Over the years, it's changed a lot. And then uh, now I have this uh, privilege and I am very happy for that. Um, so what, what is my idea? My idea is that uh, the society in general, and specifically this kind of a society in particular, will play an important role, especially to promote education, research, and especially technological development. So my idea is that this society can be a real house of the innovation, and especially for the young surgeons. I believe that the society should uh, um, help the young surgeons uh, to teach a new, uh, new technique, uh, to involve the young surgeon for uh, new technologies, uh, how they uh, have to use uh, this technology, but without to have a very good background for uh, the for the, the principle of surgery that uh, our master 
teach it to us. Professor Murphy, have you got a message for the medical students or for the junior doctor who are thinking or wondering to undertake this uh, journey and training in thoracic surgery? Oh, this is, uh, um, this is uh, almost uh, the, the natural uh, uh, answer if we consider what I said before, no? Um, I believe that the message is uh, that for the junior uh, surgeon, is a uh, competency, determination, visionary. To be visionary is uh, very important. And uh, the technology and uh, uh, visionary is uh, uh, very important uh, to be together. Because, uh, uh, because if you don't have a, an open mind, you cannot understand uh, the innovation, you cannot understand uh, how, you, how you, you have to use uh, this kind of technology and especially um, to understand really what I mean uh, surgery. In other words, what I want to say is that uh, um, the young surgeon uh, should be first surgeons and uh, the technology, which is important, is mandatory to understand and to, to use it, but they have to take in mind that uh, it's just a tool in the hands of a very expert surgeon. Professor Melfi, thank you very much. It was a really great honor, thank you. You are young and uh, I would give you all my wish, and best wish for your career. Thank you.